Yes, uh, one second, we'll start. Okay, so these biomolecules, um, uh, we haven't done that amino acid um, part, right? So I, I, I purposely haven't taken that because uh, it is given in NCRT, there's a table given. Okay, there are some nine to 10, you know, uh, some compounds are given different amino acids with their formula. So you should memorize all those uh, name with their structure. Okay, amino acids one, right? That is only important uh, there we have. Plus the concept of Jupiter ion, you just memorize, just go through once, okay? So NCRT, you just go through, that is enough, more than enough. Okay, and I have checked that question. Uh, what was that? Um, maltose, right? Maltose is 1,4-alpha glycosidic linkage. Okay, so the uh, in PDF, it was a mistake over there. Answer was correct, 1,4-alpha glycosidic linkage, okay? Okay, so polymers, uh, or what polymers, we have a lot of uses of polymers. We have like, you know, like every things around ourselves, most of the things are polymers only, wire, bottle, you know, laptop, keyboard that we have, okay. Uh, we can have pen, okay, any plastics, you can say, uh, a water pipe that we have, water tank, all these are different, different kinds of polymers, okay, non-sticky cookware, another kind of polymers. So we have a huge application of polymers, correct? So polymers are basically, it is the, uh, you know, when a simple molecule, a polymer is simply large molecule, you know, which build up by respective binding together of many smaller units called monomers, okay? So it is built up of different monomers. Now, when you talk about monomers, monomers, we have different, different types. We can have only one type of monomer or we can have more than one type of monomers, okay? So polymers are basically made up of monomers, of one or different type. One or different type. Only one type of monomer if you have, then it is called as homopolymer, right? So you see here, two or more type of repeating monomer units is called copolymer. Means we have different monomer present into that, different monomer units. Homopolymer, we have only one type of monomer units. Only single repeating monomer are known as homopolymers, okay? Uh, we have some examples, some properties uh, that we'll see of this kind of polymers. Characters, classification of polymers based on physical properties. We have elastomers, few properties, just one, one line. If you want, you can write it down for this because property-based question also they ask in the exam. Elastomers, physical properties. Elastomers, which are able to return to their original shape after the removal of force, which causes the stretching in them and are known as elastomers. So basically it is, uh, you know, it is uh, a spring kind of property. Just a second, I'm getting called.
So elastomer says what? Uh, we have some stretching property and it returns back to its original position. Natural rubber is one of the example of elastomers. Okay. Fiber, certain polymers in molten states, when passed through a small hole of a die in a die, can be made in thin thread, which on cooling form fibers. Such polymers are known as fibers. Examples, we have nylon, dacron, polyethylene. Remember, for all these uh, polymers, we need to know the monomers of it. We'll discuss that later. Thermoplastic polymers, polymers which is hard at room temperature become soft on heating and viscous. And when heated as known as thermoplastic. So basically you have a polymers. When you heat it, it becomes, so it becomes soft. When you cool it, cool it down, it becomes hard again. Okay, that is thermoplastic. Thermosetting polymers which becomes high cross link and solidify into hard insoluble mass. When heated is known as thermosetting polymers or resin. One of the example is Bakelite. It is widely used in molded parts of adhesive for coatings, okay? So elastomers, fibers, thermoplastic, thermosettings, these are the four different, uh, you know, polymers based on their physical properties. Now you see some monomers and the polymers I have written over here. Few things that you know already, no need to write down. For, for example, you see this compound is ethylene. So ethylene, the polymer is polyethylene. Poly term you have to introduce. It is propylene. Polymer is polypropylene, okay? It is vinyl chloride because the chlorine is present at the vinyl position, vinyl chloride. So it is polyvinyl chloride, PVC in short, you must have heard, PVC. If you remove this chlorine with benzene, CCH5, it becomes a styrene and it is polystyrene, styrene we also call it as polystyrene is the name of the polymer. It is acrylonitride. See here, with respect to this, we are discussing. 1H you replaced by CH3, okay, CH3. It becomes, it becomes propylene. Then this CH3 replaced by chlorine, vinyl chloride. Chlorine by CCH5 is styrene. CCH5 by CN, it becomes acrylonitride. Again by OH, it becomes vinyl alcohol, right? And then we have acyl group present here, so vinyl acetate, okay? So polyvinyl acetate, polyvinyl alcohol. This name you must remember, acrylonitrile gives you orlone or acrylene. Polystyrene, okay, with this it forms. Vinyl acetate gives you polyvinyl acetate. If you have CST over here, then methyl, methacrylate, okay. Plexiglass or leucide, not that important. CFT, CF2, CF2, it is fluoro, it is teflon and teflon monomer is this tetrafluoroethylene. Some uses also you must take care of. Teflon is used in values and gaskets coating, methyl, methacrylate, plexiglass or leucite, aircraft, windows, dentures, molded articles, many examples we have. Polyvinyl acetate paints, okay. Important one in this one is um, uses of orlon is important, right? Polystyrene use is important, okay? PVC is also important, okay? Use is also important, okay? Probably they won't ask this in JE, but BITSAT and other exams you can think of. It's a very common kind of question. Need also, they can ask this question. Okay, copy this, uses. Okay. Okay, next is vulcanization of rubber. <laughs> vulcanization of rubber means when uh, we have natural or synthetic rubbers are soft, when you heat this in presence of sulfur, Okay, when you heat this in presence of sulfur, zero to like almost around 5% of sulfur will take. This results into the formation of sulfur bridge between the polymer chain. So there will be a cross linking of sulfur chain. 
of sulfur cross linking okay because of that it becomes uh, you know we can say a bit tough or a stiff we can say that we call it as vulcanization of rubber okay so there are uh, examples uh, like vulcanization rubber is this only in this what happens the cross linking of sulfur takes place and the molecules becomes tough there uh, what we can say there um, mm, Uh, there's some yes there's the elasticity decreases actually okay tensile strength increases this term you should know tensile strength increases elasticity decreases because of cross linking of sulfur elasticity decreases okay so this is we call it as vulcanization of rubber 5% around sulfur will take into this example of copolymers we have vinyl chloride and we have a uh, vinylidene chloride gives you a polymer called saran right in this there is one very important uh, example we have i'll tell you that um, that is bakelite bakelite we have next i'll show you few more examples it is not given here i'll just write down see in this one the mechanism of polymerization can be either additional polymerization condensation polymerization and in that we have a step growth also possible okay so we have this molecule ethylene glycol and terphthalic acid this gives you terylene so you don't have to write down this uh, you know this reaction but you should know the monomer like it is ethylene glycol and terphthalic acid is the monomer of terylene okay terylene forms strong fibers okay it is used for blending with cotton in clothing and also in making seat belts packing of foods etc okay nylon 6 and nylon 66 okay just a second in nylon 6 what happens 6 represents the number of atoms present there right okay so we have reaction you don't have to memorize here cyclohexane with you know there's some oxidizing agent converts into this with nh2oh we'll get oxime and with acid we'll get this that is common caprolactam okay and with this caprolactam n number of molecules of this okay dehydration takes place or we also call it as condensation this product this step is condensation condensation gives you a polymer that we call it as nylon 6 you see because of six carbon atom in the monomer the present polymer is called nylon 6 it is used for the manufacture of tire cords and ropes okay so the monomer of nylon 6 is caprolactam over here this one is more important nylon 66 right and in this one and in this one we are using adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine okay adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine 
in both if you count the number of carbon atom it is 6 and 6 and hence the molecule is called nylon 66 where this 6 and 6 represents the number of carbon atom in this two molecule repeating unit also you must remember this nh to c double bond o it is coming what happens in this this h and this oh forms h2o and it goes out right hence we get the monomer this monomer this repeating unit is also very important here okay nylon 66 is very important terylene one more thing the common name of terylene is dacron as well yes yes we can say okay sir peptide linkage okay bakelite few more things we'll discuss after this we have questions but uh, there are few more things left we'll discuss that in bakelite it is actually resin okay one kind of resin it is and one thing is missing here it is also bonded with ch2 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 okay so it is cross linked because of this cross linking it is also called as cross linked polymer many a times they have asked this question when which of these polymers are cross linked polymers cross linked polymers are those in which we have cross linking like this like you see vulcanization of rubber also results into cross linked polymer there we have sulfur sulfur bond here it is this bond here okay what is the monomer of this the monomer we have phenol and formaldehyde okay the monomer is phenol and formaldehyde we have so bakelite is formed by phenol and formaldehyde uh, monomer some examples you see thermoplastic the first slide we have seen thermoplastic the examples of thermoplastic which becomes soft on heating is polythene okay we have polystyrene pvc polyvinyl chloride teflon all these are uh, thermoplastic okay thermosetting polymers the example is bakelite bakelite melamine formaldehyde thermosetting polymers bakelite then melamine formaldehyde clear examples you must melamine formula you know what is the formula of melamine have asked they have asked this question how many uh, you know lone pair or uh, you know pi bonds are present in melamine so melamine the formula is this alternate uh, nitrogen atom and this carbon atom contains nh2 must remember this formula this is melamine okay now you see few more things uh, regarding rubber will discuss here see what happens rubber we have one is natural rubber and synthetic rubber okay so polyisoprene is an example of natural rubber 
is an example of natural rubber. Okay. Obviously, polyisoprene is a polymer, so it's monomer, as the name itself suggests. It is isoprene. It's a monomer. Isoprene is the monomer, and formula of isoprene is CH two double bond C CH three CH double bond CH two. This is a monomer, two methyl one comma three butadiene. Okay, if you draw the mo draw the polymer of this, then the structure you will get like this. If CH two single bond C double bond CH single bond CH two. single bond CH2, it is the repeating unit. And here we have one CH3 present. Obviously, if you look at this double bond, across this double bond, geometrical isomerism is possible. So you get two GI here, cis and trans. Cis is soft and trans is relatively hard in nature. Okay, so the cis form of this monomer is used in rubber. And the transform of this is used to prepare gatta parcha. Dentist use this gatta parcha while you go for RCT, root canal treatment, okay? The stick kind of thing, uh, like you must have uh, seen toothpick, right? Similar, it looks like very similar to that. Okay, gatta parcha is made of a Okay, this is the rubber we have. Now, uh, synthetic rubber, few examples are very important. I'll just write down a few examples. We have butadiene rubber, we have neoprene, styrene butadiene rubber. Okay, all these are synthetic rubber we have. So, um, First one is butadiene. Butadiene rubber, the monomer is butadiene only. CH2 double bond CH single bond CH double bond CH2. The monomer. If you draw the polymer of this, this double bond will shift over here open bond, and this is the repeating unit we have. Okay, I'm not drawing this simple, you can understand that. It is a monomer. Synthetic rubber, next one is neoprene. Neoprene is in isoprene, you just the two methyl, that methyl you just replace by chlorine. See this CH2 double bond C, single bond CH, double bond CH2, and this is Cl. This is neoprene, okay? Neoprene on polymerization, it, it becomes polychloroprene um, or polychloropene is nothing but neoprene, the common name is. Okay, it is a monomer of neoprene. Okay, next is styrene butadiene rubber. SBR, styrene butadiene rubber. Styrene butadiene means you will have one of the component is styrene. Styrene is this with benzene ring here and butadiene, the another monomer. Okay, that's why it is styrene butadiene. CH2 double bond, CH single bond, CH double bond, CH2. Okay, styrene butadiene. Hence, two different monomers we are taking here. So it is a copolymer. That is also you must uh, keep in mind. Not difficult to understand, obviously, but yes, uh, you have to memorize all these things you have to keep in mind. Correct? These are the monomers, gives you styrene butadiene. Only monomers I'm giving you here. Another one we have in this, that is acrylonitrile and butadiene rubber. Okay? Acrylonitrile. 
nitrile and butadiene so one is one one mono, monomer is butadiene other one is acrylonitrile what is acrylonitrile ch2 double bond ch and single bond cn acrylonitrile is this butadiene we know ch2 double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch2 okay this gives you acrylonitrile butadiene rubber obviously this one is also copolymer right two different monomers we are using sbr styrene butadiene rubber we also call it as buna s b u n a s right this uh, polymerization takes place with the help of a catalyst and the catalyst is sodium here and a is the catalyst we use in this polymerization process this is the catalyst bu stands for butadiene s stands for styrene na stands for catalyst similarly this one is buna n bu stands for butadiene na is the catalyst n is the acrylonitrile okay buna n and buna s both are copolymer two different monomers we are using hence both are copolymer okay jeller nata catalyst if you remember we use this catalyst in order to get uh, you know similar properties okay for similar properties for of the polymers right better properties better uh, you know strength or to get desired property we use this okay so what is jeller nata formula you must remember you know we are not going into detail of all this once they have asked the formula so jeller nata catalyst is what it is tiCl4 plus trialkyl aluminate alr3 we can have any alkyl group mostly we take c2h5 but it can be anything c2h5 also we take so this is jigler nata catalyst okay once this question was asked in mains uh, like tushar sir must shared his story with all of you i guess he was writing down the j mains exam and then j mains means that time this advance was mains that time okay so we have j screening and then mains right the final wala so there was a question in which one catalyst he was asking he doesn't know about it right maybe he forgot or something he just knew this a uh, catalyst like j lanata -Lan catalyst is this just knew this only one catalyst he had he got this so in that time the subjective questions they do not have the negative marking so you can take an attempt okay because options were not there so he 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 just wrote this particular thing okay because he knew only this particular uh, you know catalyst and luckily he got the correct one so this was asked once okay important catalyst it is we used to get it uh, you know for the better uh, uh, properties of the uh, polymer correct so this is it for polymers also like in brief we have discussed all the theories okay so we'll see some questions now yeah the monomer of synthetic rubber just now we had discussed is chloroprene seventh one
Yes, seventh one, the answer is what? Saran, just now I discussed here, you see. One sec. Okay, I'm not getting it. Anyway, seventh one, the answer is what? Natural rubber, we have seen it is isoprene, it's not a copolymer. Synthetic rubber is a copolymer. Synthetic rubber, not always, not all the synthetic rubbers are copolymer. Yes. Okay. Neoprene is not a copolymer. Okay, gatta parcha is also not a copolymer. Right, so homopolymer. What is saran? Saran is a copolymer, actually. You must have seen that, um, you know, uh, the aluminum file foil that we use to wrap food, right? That is also, that is made up of this only, this polymer only. Okay, so aluminum foil that we use. Sir, hmm. sir, do we need to remember the composition of these copolymers or are the names good enough? Yes, yes, yes. They they ask, they ask. You have to. Important. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. The monomer of Teflon. The monomer of Teflon is option. C. Done? Okay. Following the thermosetting polymers. Thermosetting polymers is Bakelite. Which is the following the fiber? Nylon 6. Thermoplastic. The example of thermoplastic, bakelite, obviously we do not have. Can we have it as polythene? Yes, thermoplastic is polythene. The monomers of Buna S, we have discussed butadiene, sty styrene, right? Butadiene and styrene. Option B. Among cellulose, polyvinyl chloride, nylon, 
uh, natural rubber, the polymer in which Ah, oh, fine. See, fiber. See, Varun. Fiber depends upon it. Depends. It's the physical classification. Depends upon the strength of the polymers. So we have several classification. One particular polymer can get into uh, different different categories. Okay. So the question is about thermoplastic. Thermoplastic polythene. Yes, it is a thermoplastic. Depending upon its strength, it can go into the category of fiber also. Okay. Twenty-first one. What is the answer? Twenty-first. Uh, the polymer in which the intermolecular force of attraction is weakest. How do we do this? Intermolecular force of attraction is weakest. Sir, I think elastomers have the weakest intermolecular forces because we can stretch it, right? So, which one is the elastomer here? Resin natural rubber. What? So natural rubber. Natural rubber. Natural rubber. We can stretch it, right? So obviously, uh, the answer for this one is option D. So okay. we can do the do this like normally also, right? Normally, as in PVC is made in pipes. Cellulose uh -huh. is wood. Like you you have that understanding, like which can be stretchable or not. Based on that, also you can do. That's fine. Yeah, that's what you are talking. You know. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Which the following is not a chain growth uh, polymer. Chain growth polymer. What is terylene? Terylene we had discussed. It is um, dacron, right? The common name is dacron only. So if you see the chain growth growth polymer, um, that is means we have. Addition polymerization. One after the other, the monomers will get attached. Okay, terylene. If you see the composition of it, not the composition, the manufacturing technique, or how do we produce terylene? It it is based on the condensation polymer, step growth polymerization, not chain growth. Okay, it is step growth polymerization. We have discussed it, and that is condensation polymerization. Terylene is the answer. Common name is dacron also for this. What is Orlon again? I forgot the name. Like what's the? One second. Orlon is uh, is nothing but this one. Um, what was that? So it is the acrylonitrile one. Ah, huh, CH two double bond CH and CN acrylonitrile. Yes. Okay. Acrylonitrile. Poly acrylonitrile is nothing but Orlon. Yes. So fine, few questions uh, like we have done. Like I said, I, I have taken the entire theory. Obviously you have to uh, revise the theory. There's nothing much to understand in this. So we'll share the PDF also on this. Okay, so that you can solve more number of questions on this. Okay, okay. so this is done, uh, polymers as well. So we'll start with alcohols, the preparation method of it. This is again, method of preparation alcohol. So obviously we don't have much time. So we'll continue with this. And the next class will continue with alcohol, phenol, ether, plus amines also will finish. Okay. So next is what date? 30th, I guess, right? Or 31st? 30th. Sir. 30th. So 30th, uh, 38, and then I think third or fourth, and then one more. So I am, I am assuming four or five classes I'll get. Okay. So in that I'll finish uh, all this. Uh, I would request D block and metallurgy. Uh, if you, uh, can do on your own, that would be better. Then we can finish the other things also. I will provide some brief notes on this so that we can revise on your own and some PDF for questions. Uh, I will share that. Okay. So you can revise. If we get time in the last, we can have a session on this in the last. Anyways, so this is, uh, you know, the method of preparation. This reaction we know already oxymercuration, demercuration. The only difference is what since we need to prepare an alcohol here. So what we take. In the last, instead of this H2O, we will be taking like alcohol. If you are prepared, then H2O we are taking. Remember that here, that this reaction follows what rule? This reaction follows Markovnikov rule. These two reactions are very much similar. Hydroboration oxidation and oxymercuration, demercuration. Okay. 
one follows Markovnikov rule, and other one follows anti-Markovnikov rule. We know what is these rules, right? So, in both cases, what happens across double bonded carbon atom, H and OH will get attacked. C C H O H. H and OH will get attached to the double bonded carbon atom. One is according to Markovnikov rule, means negative part of the reagent is OH minus and H plus we have. So Markovnikov rule in oxymercuration and anti Markovnikov rule in hydroboration oxidation reaction. Reagent, you must remember, it is BH3, which forms trialkyl boron. And then we know what all reactions of trialkyl boron we have I've given you already in the previous classes. And then the next step we use H2O2 OH minus gives you this. Okay. Here also we have. Uh, first, huh. Sir, in the first step, uh, after. Your voice is breaking. Voice, we can also. I, I am not getting your voice is breaking. So we can use BH3. Huh. THF also, right off. BS3 THF. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, no? yeah, tell me. Yes, sir, instead of any BH4. Here you are taking, here you are asking. We are using a reducing agent over there. Just a second. We are using a reducing agent there. No, no, either. It's a, first of all, it is a, you know, it's a name reaction. So for name reaction, like oxymercuration, demercuration, the reagents are fixed. Okay. BS3 THF we use in hydroboration reduction reaction in the first step that too. Okay. So we can use here NABH4 preferably we use. Okay. Other reducing agent also we can use. BS3 THF we don't use over here. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the point is the source of OH and H you should know. The source of OH is what over here? What is the source of this? Source of water. water. It's not ROH here. Yeah, it's water. If it is ROH, then you, you will get here OR, that is an ether. Okay. And this H will get attached over here because, and Markovnikov rules, so OH minus will be on more substituted carbon, and H on lesser one. H ka, uh, the source would be this NABH4 reducing agent. So if you write NABD4, it would be CH2D. This is the two points that you have to, uh, you know, keep in mind over here. Mechanism is not at all important. Okay. Oxymercuration, demercuration gives you an alcohol. According to Markovnikov rule, the source of OH is H2O and the source of H is NABH4. Here, hydroboration oxidation follows anti Markovnikov rule. The source of OH would be this, uh, you know, the, the, in the second step, the alkaline medium that we're using over here in the second step. The first step, the source of H would be BH3 over here, right? Both cases, you see, we do not have any rearrangement. We do not have any rearrangement here. Okay. In this, what happens? We get four membered cyclic ring. Here we have a cyclic mercurinium ion, if you look at the mechanism. Uh, H2O2, we can use a uh, Venkat. Uh, um, D2O2 also, but preferably what happens if you're using D2O2, then you should write OD minus that conjugate acid base uh, pair we should take. Otherwise, we'll get the mixture of both. OH minus we also can attack, OD minus will also can attack. Okay. Both possibility we have. Yes, I got it, sir. Okay. So this is the one thing. Now, alcohol, this reaction is very, very important. The Grignard reagent reaction and preparation of alcohol. Okay, it is there in carbonyl compound also, the third one. Synthesis of alcohol from Grignard reagent. Okay, if you are taking formaldehyde, okay, formaldehyde if you are taking, then the alcohol will be, would be a one degree alcohol. Directly you can memorize. 
वी नो आर एम जी एक्स का रिएक्शन विथ कार्बोनिल कंपाउंड इट फॉलोज वॉट न्यूक्लियोफिलिक यू नो अटैक ऑफ आर माइनस यू सो इफ यू हैव एच सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एच दिस आर माइनस वी नो इन प्रेजेंस फॉर न्यू फॉर दिस कार्बोनिल कंपाउंड आर माइनस बिहेव एज अ न्यूक्लियोफाइल ओवर हियर राइट इफ इट इज एन एन एक्टिव an active hydrogen then acid base reaction there okay like water so r minus will attack onto this this will go up right and it forms r ch h o minus which from h2o h plus it takes h plus over here so r ch2 oh you will get correct and mg oh x the another compound okay so only formaldehyde gives you 1 degree alcohol if you have any other one like you have another aldehyde gives you 2 degree alcohol if you have ketone gives you 3 degree alcohol this you can directly memorize formaldehyde gives you primary alcohol any other aldehyde except formaldehyde gives you secondary alcohol and ketone gives you tertiary alcohol mechanism is exactly same that i have written over here okay did you copy this one minute sir okay thank you thank you sir yeah this is the three methods of preparation oxymercuration demercuration hydroboration oxidation and grignard reagent okay reaction of lithium acetylates or alkyl alkynyl grignard reagents with aldehyde or ketone so we can have this with ketone metal will get attached to this oxygen here right and then it converts into i'm just a second one reagent is missing here okay so it is not mentioned here but we'll take water in this step then we'll get h over here and li um, oh hold twice will go out same reaction we have when we have this grignard reagent with this c triple bond c will get attached to this carbon atom right it has omg br here with water it converts into oh okay it is not that important reaction we have this one is important when we have rcho reduction we are doing so c double bond oh on reduction it converts into ch2oh this you can memorize okay aldehyde on reduction gives you 1 degree alcohol ketone on reduction gives you 2 degree alcohol so sodium hyde borohydride nabh4 is the convenient reagent to carry out the reduction of aldehyde or ketones into alcohol nabh4 in alcohol with as h plus h2o gives you this lilh4 in ether can also be used for the reduction it is particularly useful for the reduction of alpha beta unsaturated ketone copy this down alpha beta unsaturated ketone the reduction of such a keto uh, ketone gives a mixture of both unsaturated and saturated alcohol for example this alpha beta unsaturated lilh4 alcohol c double bond o converts into choh okay if you have c double bond o it converts into choh simple okay c double bond o ch oh one hydrogen is already there so ch2 oh it becomes okay so c double bond o ch oh double bond is as it is plus we also get this in which this double bond also get reduced into alkane li alh4 if you are using then we have mostly we have this composition is more and this alkane will be lesser so 
if you have alpha beta unsaturated um, uh, ketones, then preferably we use LiAlH4 in ether. Copy down both reaction. Does it have to be cyclic or nothing like that? Alpha beta any. Okay, sir. Alpha beta unsaturated any ketone. So why does it give that uh, unsaturated product also? See, the thing is, uh, the reactivity of LiAlH4 towards the carbonyl uh, uh, carbon, carbonyl group, is is higher than the NaBH4 car reaction. We know LiAlH4 is a good reducing agent. The activity of this is more over here. LH4 takes place on this uh, carbonyl carbon more in comparison to this. Okay, so the thing is here, uh, it's not like it is a stronger reducing agent than NaBH4. So if it can reduce double bond, this also can reduce, but its reactivity towards this carbonyl carbon is more than NaBH4, then it, it will more reduce this than the double bond we have over here. Hence the composition of this one will be more. So but LiLH4 and NaBH4 don't act on double bond sir, in general. Huh, yes, uh, Tripan, what did you say? Uh, tell me, LiLH4 and NaBH4? So they don't act on double bond in general, sir. They don't oxidize. Sorry, see, hydrogen. Uh, see, we we have we do not prefer uh, these reagents to reduce double bond. Okay, especially NaBH4, we do not prefer. But it doesn't mean that it cannot do. Not always, but if you have alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then to some extent NaBH4 can. Even if you see. It is only 41%, like not only, but it is 41%. Majority of the product will be here only. So usually in books, it is not written that it reduce uh, you know, effectively, it can reduce double bond effectively. But the reaction possible, it happens, more happens with NaBH4 because its reactivity towards C double bond O carbonyl group is lesser than to that of LiLH4. And hence the reaction is. See, any uh, you know, reduction reaction, any one, because both have tendency to produce hydrogen, correct? If you look at the mechanism, just take your notes, both produce hydride ion, correct? So hydride ion can react at carbonyl group also and double bonded carbon also, right? The point is which group attracts that hydride ion more? That is how, obviously, when we say it is not possible and doesn't mean it is zero or something like that. You see, it is only 2%. Hence, in some book, it is written that it won't affect the double bond at all. And we have better reducing agent to reduce the double bond. Okay, sir, got it. Okay. So this you must take care of. If you have only one thing you have to memorize, if you have alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then we'll prefer NaBH4 to reduce this over LiAlH4. This is what the key point we have here, nothing else. Okay, next is uh, some chemical properties. No, LiAlH4 LA is more powerful, Venkat. No, sir, with respect to the other hydrogenation reaction. For hydrogenation, we'll take Rennie nickel only, no, because we require a surface over there where the hydrogen get absorbed. That's why, uh, see, LiAlH4 and NaBH4 works well in solution. You see there we have taken alcohol and ether solution, correct? In the previous reaction, if you see. Yes, sir. Right, so in solution, we'll take that reagent. But if you have to add hydrogen or a double bonded carbon atom, then the hydrogen, since it is a gas, it needs a surface where it can absorb and then attract to the double bonded carbon atom. If you remember, in hydrogenation, what happens? Hydrogen get attached from the same side, right? Syn addition we have, isn't it? Yes, sir, syn addition. Why it happens? Because hydrogen first get adsorbed, adsorbed on the surface of catalyst, nickel, platinum, whatever you are using. So first hydrogen is at, adsorbed at the surface. And since it is fixed now, so it will attack or you know attach to the 
double bonded carbon atom from the same side since it is adsorbed so it is not possible that this hydrogen from the bottom and this hydrogen from the top it will join and hence it is syn addition over there okay got right. it okay. so hydrogenation of alkene it's simple the reaction of alkene and hydrogen for that hydrogen requires a surface and hence we are providing the catalyst for the reaction yes i got it sir okay now chemical properties alcohol you see two three types of reaction it shows one in which um uh, one more thing i tell you i just um, you know i recall this alcohol has acidic properties correct so if you look at the acidic behavior of c2h5oh h2o and ch3oh which one is most acidic what is the acidity order we have proper the acidic order is ch3oh is more acidic than water and more acidic than c2h5oh okay this is an exception kind of thing if you go by logic then you will write the conjugate base of this ch3o minus conjugate base of this oh minus conjugate base of this c2h5o minus if you look at the plus i nature of ch3 and c2h5 it will increase the electron density on o minus oxygen and hence it is a weak base weak conjugate base means not a good acid still this ch3 uh, oh is a better acid than than water itself so in aliphatic alcohol aliphatic alcohol methanol is the only one which is more acidic than water okay keep that in mind in aliphatic alcohol methanol is the only alcohol which is more acidic than water it the order is based on its ka value ka pk value correct so keep that in mind logic is not applying over here the plus i or effect over here correct okay so alcohol reaction we have three types of reaction here possible where we have uh, we'll talk about the dissociation of oh bond where the alcohol is behaving as an acid okay another possibility in which when our o bond carbon and oxygen bond is getting break okay and one we have the miscellaneous reaction okay so these three types of reaction alcohol shows right so first one you see this particular thing see the general formula of simple alcohol is roh the reaction shows by alcohol may be classified into two categories that is roh and roh this bond breaks or this bond breaks right uh so reaction which involves the dissociation of carbon oxygen bond the first one is reaction with hydrogen halides what happens this bond breaks oh minus h plus combines forms water and rx alkyl halide preparation method of alkyl halide right as we know oh is a poor living group but its protonation converts into a good living group you know h2 is a better living group than oh that's why alcohol always tends towards protonation first whenever carbon oxygen bond has to break same thing happens here from h from hx h plus protonates this oxygen h2o goes out okay either carbocation forms or won forms depends upon the substrate okay and then x minus will get attached so if it is 1 degree alcohol you see it is sn2 mechanism if it is 3 degree sn1 mechanism yes right conjugate acid is always a be better living room than its base okay two degree alcohol may proceed by both mechanism uh, we have discussed many times this sn1 sn2 so i'm not uh, you know repeating those things again okay next is the reactivity order important have asked this question many times hi is most reactive than hbr hcl why hi is most reactive less overlap less for yeah yeah so hi iodine uh, can easily you know release h plus and then the reaction will be faster allyl benzene is resonance stabilized 
uh, benzyl is also resonance stabilized, three degree, two degree, one degree. This is the order of reactivity here. Reagents used are concentrated HBr, NaBr plus means NaBr plus concentrated H2SO4 we can use. HCl with ZnCl2 we can use and concentrated HCl we can use. Okay, HCl, ZnCl2 facilitate the formation of H plus from HC, takes Cl minus and forms H plus. Right? Next is dehydration. Dehydration is removal of H2O. We have discussed this. Alkene forms by elimination reaction, E1, E2. Uh, all these things we have discussed. So first of all, protonation happens here. H plus, depending upon obviously the mechanism, E1, E2. Uh, it goes here, H2O goes out, positive charge here. If it is E1, then there will be a positive charge forms. And then we have hydride shift and all those. We'll get the most stable carbocation. And then from the adjacent carbon, uh, H plus comes out, leaving its electron pair behind. And we'll get two uh, alkene over here. Okay. Mechanism, it is given here in the town. You see, it is even mechanism it is given. And hence, it is E1. So order is 3, 2, and 1. Okay. Said Jeff and Hoffman product we can think of. Okay. Reaction is phosphorus trihalide. Phosphorus trihalides gives you Rx. H3PO3, okay? These are the three bonds we have in which carbon-oxygen bond breaks. Okay, three bonds. What are those three bonds? We have, the first one we have was formation of Rx, ROH plus HX, formation of Rx. Second one is dehydration. Third one is reaction with PCL3, PX3. Reaction which shows dissociation of OH bond in which basically the alcohol is behaving as an acid. Okay. So when we have the active metals, active metals, like we have Na, potassium, magnesium, all these, it forms salt and hydrogen always eliminates. Very important reaction. We have this one. Hydrogen gas eliminates in this reaction. The reactivity of alcohol is CS3OH, then one degree, two degree, and three degree. Right, like I said, alcohol in the reaction behaves in acid. It is worth comparing the acidic strength of alcohol with other species based on the following reactions. Okay, so it is basically conjugate acid base reaction we have, which we can easily compare on this. Okay, this order you just write it down. Here it is, uh, you know, not mentioned, but I'll just correct it. The relative acidity is H2O is more than alcohol then alkyne, then amine, and then alkane. This R, you must know, it, it should not be equal to CH3. For alcohol, I'm talking about. But water, alcohol, alkyne, amine, and alkane. Okay. Alcohol reacts with carboxylic acid, H2O eliminates, and it forms ester. Right? So it is also goes correct with anhydride and acyl chloride. With acetyl chloride, what happens? With acetyl chloride, what happens? We'll get HCl, and then we'll get ester on this. Yeah, this kind of uh, reaction we have in this. Next, we'll see the other slides. What we have one more slides will come. Sure. This one also we do. Okay, one degree alcohol give, on oxidation gives aldehyde. Okay, we have many different uh, oxidizing agents, but overall, you have to keep this in mind. If you have one degree alcohol on oxidation, it gives aldehyde. Two degree alcohol on oxidation gives ketone. Okay, few examples is given over here. Here we are taking PCC, pyridinum chlorochromate. PCC converts one degree alcohol into aldehyde. One degree alcohol is rightly converted into carboxylic acid by the use of potassium permanganate, KMnO4, very strong oxidizing agent. Okay. Basically, it is an intermediate. First, aldehyde and then acids. 
If it is very strong, then the reaction won't stop till aldehyde. It converts aldehyde further into an acid. 2-DD alcohol is changed into a ketone by the use of potassium dichromate or CRO3 in acetic acid, CRO3 in pyridine. Copy down this. After this, we'll continue in the next class. Okay, so next class, like I said, we'll finish alcohol, phenol, ether, plus amines also will finish next class. Okay, I will share a few PDF for S block and uh, biomolecules polymers. You can solve questions on them. Okay, done guys. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank I will you. share. I will share. I will share on the group. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You. Mehul thank is you. there in the learnist. You can check. It's uploaded there, Mehul. Mehul. All the videos are there. You can check. Okay, thank guys. You, thank you.